Blessings to all. I'm G. Craig Lewis. We are here with another episode of The Exposition. We're all the way up to episode seven, and we are very excited about what God is doing through these, uh, the response. It's just been a blessing. It's a, just, just something that we're doing, something new here, uh, and we're excited about it, how it's helping people, just trying to bring clarity to some things that aren't being dealt with, uh, things that I feel aren't being dealt with enough in the body of Christ and bringing some sound wisdom with, with with no agenda. I think that's the most important thing. No agenda. We're not trying to get members. We're not trying to get money. We're not trying to, you know, get likes and views. We're just bringing the word of God and uh, trying to expound on some things to help uh, help people, help God's people. And so uh, I got Jay Bryan here with me. Good to see you again, man. Got uh, Carmina Barnett. And uh, so we're going to get rolling with this. Last week, we kind of covered the uh, year of the woman. The response was our biggest response. It was even <coughs> bigger than the black Hebrew Israelite response. Can you no, believe that? No, the one. Uh, yeah. So uh, we had a very good response. A lot of women. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of uh, emails and testimonials and different things from women saying that they were blessed by the information. And, and a lot of them aren't in a position to uh, instill it uh, all or to properly live it out like they would want but they're all wanting to be in position to pray to God and get to that place. And right. that's what's most important, that we all get there. You know, when the truth came, we all had to line up with it. Absolutely. And some of us were able to do it instantaneously. Some of us, it took some time. It took some dying of ourselves and adjustments and different things. But that's what church, that's what this life that we're living is all about anyway. So, that's right. But let's, let's get into this. Today, we're going to be talking about the mating male. So we're going to be, we're going to kind of flip the script going from, last week's uh, woman show right. to the man show. And so right. we're going to kind of balance the equation a little bit. And um, well, I'll give it over to you, Carmina. What, what, what questions do you have? Come well, on. I got a lot of questions today. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start here. Let's talk about our single men. And why is it that they hold single women to a higher standard than themselves? And what I mean when I say that is they want us to be pure and holy and wholesome and all of that. Mm -hmm. But they're living completely opposite to that. Um, see, so that's definitely a double standard and that's definitely a red flag um, that we should pay attention to or that women should, should pay attention to. So uh, if the man has no self-respect to live clean, but expects his choice of a woman to live clean, then he probably won't change even after marriage. Mm. Right. So this is definitely um, a hypocrite. He's an unstable mm. hypocrite. So if we, if we read James 1 and 8, uh, it states that a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. As, as it simply means if, if you're double minded. Um, obviously, I want to hold you to a standard that myself that I, I don't I don't feel like I have to or I present it as if I am right. Then the hypocrisy part of it is that I put on the front like I am, but really deep down inside, I'm not or behind closed doors. I'm not. But out in front and open in front of everybody else, I'm saying you're the wrong person. Um, and so we do see that a lot, especially today in society when you're dealing with the male and the female, um, unfortunately. So. It's definitely a red flag that we should pay attention to. Yeah. And then a lot of fathers, um, I believe a lot of fathers, you know, try to instill respect of their mother, you know, tell, teaching a young boy respect of his mother and respect of his sisters. You respect women. Right. But then, you know, slapping him on the back and applauding him when he violates yeah. somebody else's dogs, exactly. you know. It's crazy. And so that <laughs> that ends up creating the same, you know, kind of double standard. And it creates kind of a warped uh, ideology where men will start categorizing females like these, this one is a marrying type, right. but this one is just, you know, a one night type. Mm -hmm. And you start <laughs> categorizing <laughs> them and not really respecting because you grew up with that, dub that double standard that created that I uh, ideology by your dad, you know, uh, giving you kudos when you, you know, uh, became sexually active or whatever, s slap it up high, right. but then want you to respect your sister and your mother. So uh, that, that has a lot to do with it as well. Okay, so then you bring up a point about the types. So another question we have, why does it seem that so many men, they don't want to commit? They just cannot do it. They're happy being serial daters and just going from woman to woman to woman until, instead of <laughs> settling down and building something with one woman. So, so the word that comes to mind would be gamophobia, uh, which is just a fear of marriage. Gamo being, I think it's a Greek translation for marriage. And obviously phobos or phobia would be fear. So it's just a fear of marriage. So men that fear marriage, they, they really believe that they're just going to fail at it. Right. Um, it's, it's just a, a simple fear of failure. But 
not having a good example um, or suffering trauma from divorce or role reversal in the home um, is also a contribution to demophobia as well. So unfortunately, we do have a lot of that in the church, which we're going to expound on a little bit more later. But um, you would understand why that would happen mm -hmm. um, if, if something if, if something is presented to you one way, um, but the experience is another then there's confusion there. We know God is not the author of confusion, but that confusion is what obviously sets the, sets the tone uh, for a male to, to gain that fear. So you don't know how to properly approach marriage and definitely don't know how to, to sustain or, or build from within a marriage as, as well. So mm -hmm. I can see why that fear would be set in. Yeah, and, and then a lot of men objectify women. And that's, that's important because um, masturbation and pornography and those kind of things, they contribute to this because when you spend a lot of time looking at naked women, spend a lot of time looking at women's bodies, objectifying them, then you lose sensitivity to real women mm -hmm. or you lose your own sensitivity to real women. And uh, men that objectify women, they satisfy their sensual uh, desires. Uh, and so they don't have need of a real woman. So they'll right. go on a date just to show up with a woman, go eat for that company. But then, when it's time to be intimate or whatever, they don't feel they need to get married to be intimate when right. they're actually involved with a cyber chick. Right. And uh, we're seeing a lot of that now. And a lot of men opt for that fantasy because that fantasy comes with no responsibility. That <laughs> fantasy is just costing me AT&T internet access, right. what I'm paying a month. I mean, I don't have to take it out on a date. Right. I don't have to listen to its emotions uh, once a month. Right. I don't have to put up with its likes and its dislikes. I don't have to do nothing. Right. I can just turn on the computer and satisfy myself and go to bed. And we're seeing guys get older and older and older mm -hmm. and not be married because they are in these relationships with these uh, uh, cyber women. And First uh, Corinthians 7 and 2 says something very powerful. It says, nevertheless, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, that sex outside of marriage, let every man have his own, own wife. wife. Now, the key to this isn't his own wife, but it's every man. man every so man. Paul is basically saying every man needs a wife. Mm -hmm. If you have carnal desires, you need a wife. Mm -hmm. You ain't writing the Bible. You're not a eunuch like Paul. So mm -hmm. if you have a desire, you need your own wife and mm -hmm. let every woman have her own mm -hmm. husband. That's scripture. So that's basically telling you you're not going to be able to defy this right. because that's human nature. But if you continue to use porn and those kind of things and objectify women, you're going to lose uh, that desire and that drive to go get your own and to take care of. Absolutely. OK, so then you use the word responsibility. And when I think about that, it takes me to this question. So why have so many men lost the desire to be the provider for their family? They're expecting women now to come and carry just as much weight as they are. Why mm has -hmm. that changed? You know, it, it's weak fathers, right? So you have a weak father that don't provide for the home. Um, what that does is that creates um, daughters that also desire to take care of themselves. So it's almost like a one plus one equals two. You have a man that's not showing uh, as an example properly how to be a provider, priest, or protector in the home. Then all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, that, that equals out to that daughter not wanting the same thing. So now she goes out and she's just going to do it on her own. She didn't see her mother get treated that way. Then she's going to adapt to whatever she's seeing her mother do. And it's funny because a lot of young men are looking for the tutelage, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was sharing with Pastor earlier that some young men that I work with, and I'm, I'm young myself, young and mean, they're like 17, 18 years old. Um, they have the question, why did you get married so young? Because I would share the st my story with them. And how did you do it? Because I, I didn't, my father wasn't present in the house. Um, and it came from the church, just to be honest with you. That foundation from the church taught me that I was supposed to be married. And then that faith met with the work. God met me on the other end of it. And eventually men came into my life to help me develop. And men are still in my life helping me develop as I continue on. So it really just comes from the lack of father, uh, fathers in the home, unfortunately. Yeah. And something you just mentioned is very powerful. You said it came from the church. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest reasons why men aren't even trying to provide is because sound doctrine is not being preached right. in a lot of churches. There are churches that preach it, but there are more, probably more that don't mm. uh, preach sound doctrine because the roles in the church have been reversed. Mm. You know, you, you got women 
and, you know, in charge of everything in the church. You got a church full of women. You don't have men that young men can see and grow up mm -hmm. and, and watch. You know, right. you got, you know, the, the, the best thing they can see is little nephew John sitting there with cornrows <laughs> and earrings sitting up in church sagging his pants. Right. And that, that becomes the example. If he can play the organ, they'll let him get on the organ looking like that. If he can play the drum, direct the choir, whatever. Mm -hmm. So these are examples he's had uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that they're having in the church. And this doesn't make a guy want to go out and do the opposite of what he's growing up seeing in the church. He's going to want to do what he's seeing in church. And then another aspect of this, of course, is the effeminate down low pastors we got now. So we got a lot of just down low gay bishops and pastors and preachers that mm -hmm. have these desires because of all the Catholicism that was brought into the church. Mm -hmm. Well, the curse, we talked about this a few episodes ago, mm -hmm. curse of Catholicism is pedophilia and homosexuality. So yeah. when you bring all the garb, the robes, the look and all of that, you're going to bring the homosexuality, the pedophilia and all that in. Mm -hmm. Well, when these men are effeminate, they only have wives just to have a wife to pastor a church or whatever, mm -hmm. but the roles being reversed, and this down low preachers and, and different ones, they can't preach creation roles because right. they're defying creation role. Right. So, I mean, you can't preach that. You're not taking care of your family if you down low. Right, right. And so, <laughs> right. And so these men become a bunch of Ahabs. And you know what happened when you have a bunch of Ahabs. What mm -hmm. does that make the women? Jezebel. <laughs> the Bible calls Ahab like the wackest man in the, that ever, ever lived, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> and, and he was whack because he had no control over his wife. Let's go to the scripture. First King 21, 25 says, but there was none, nowhere, none <laughs> like unto Ahab. The, when the Bible said there was none, that, that's a whole lot of people in the Bible. Jack. Right. So right. it said there was none like Ahab who did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife did what? Stirred us. Stirred, just stirred, stirred him up. And that's what we have now. We got a bunch of men stirred up. Mm -hmm. They're not pastoring their wives or pastoring vicariously through them. Wow. They have no control over anything. So mm -hmm. when a boy grows up watching this in that house, he's mm -hmm. going to be confused about the roles. And that's what I tell everyone. When you got a Jezebel in the house, you're going to have some kids that's going to get off into some stuff because they're going to be confused about their role and their own identity. Mm -hmm. And then when this man is leading, and pastoring, right. you're going to have a bunch of folks in the audience and the congregation adapting this same confusion. I, I got a question. I wanted you to expound a little bit more on it, which is the effeminate part, right? So if we don't just, there's another, is there another side outside of just the homosexual part of it? So you have an effeminate man who was either married before or has never been married, but pastoring, but for some reason just keeps women around him. So the adjutant or the armor bearers are women or everything. His entire staff is just women, women. Everything is, is just, you know, as for him is the woman. How do how, Well, the, the, that effeminate man surrounds himself with weaker vessels. That's what it is. Because he's not a true leader or a true, because he doesn't have true fortitude as a man, mm -hmm. he's effeminate, meaning he's, he's not necessarily gay. Mm -hmm. He could be. Gotcha. <laughs> Almost. Gotcha. Like right tiptoe, right. toe on the sideline. Um, about, <laughs> about, <laughs> about to go out of bounds. He's about to go out of bounds. All he needs is a push. You ain't about to push him. Just <laughs> you know, because right. that's what it's going to lead to. If yeah. You surround yourself with 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 the weaker vessel or with women. Gotcha. Um, and so that that's a sign of weakness. Yeah. You know, if you were to look at the. Even we go back to the Roman Empire or the great war, warrior empires uh, that they used to fight all the time. They would, they would fight, you know, smaller sects in Rome or whatever, and the king would usually fight. You right. know, you would have the king on the front line or whatever. Right. But then you had these Caesars or these leaders that were surrounded by women, feed them grapes and all mm. that. Man, they wasn't going to pick up a sword. And fight. Right, right. You know, they, they were the ones that they called drunk on. They, they were the Bacchus or they had the Bacchus spirit, which is the spirit of wine drunk drunkenness mm. with wine right. and uh they were always effeminate mm. and that's that's what that is so there is a difference between and the bible uses the word effeminate right. there's a difference between effeminate and homosexual but the effeminate man is just as bad because that means he's been emasculated by a woman gotcha so here's another question and this one is a pretty big question so i want you all to stretch out on this for sure we stretch gotta out. answer stretch this it. question where did the value in marriage go why do a lot of men feel like it's okay to have a side chick? 
That's a great question. Um, so let's let's approach it like this. First of all, the church is supposed to be the example for marriage and family. And yet most churches are plagued with divorce and infidelity. You know, unfortunately, we've seen some some pretty high, high profile scandals in the church dealing with infidelity and divorce and things of that nature uh, from both ends. Right. Um, and, and it's also because, as Pastor talked about earlier, um, sound doctrine is not being preached. So if we have the effeminate man of the homo, down low homosexual man or the man who's just refusing to be married for whatever reason, um, how can he preach marriage if he's not married himself? Right. Um, then you have then, then let's just the simple fact is that God made marriage before he made church. So the, the church should focus more on marriage. You it, would it, think it, it, you would think that the church would be, I don't know, almost persecuted for that alone. That should be the <laughs> biggest marriage, not to seed time and harvest and, and bigger church venues or or gospel artists. You would think that the marriage portion of it would be the biggest brand, if you will, of the church. But unfortunately, it's not. But if we go to Matthew 19, 6, it said, Wherefore, they are no more twain, which means two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So even in that scripture is letting us know that nobody can destroy this fact that marriage is supposed to be the pillar of the church. Um, and, and going back to a couple episodes again, we, the pastor expounded on it. How can a man be a, a, take charge of being lead of the church if he's not a leader taking charge in his own home? That is how God judges us. That's why, you know, just for a second here, ABC is, is a big blessing. Um, we have a very young church. And so we put pressure and being from leadership, but also from just the men being that we're, we're so close knit. We put pressure on the younger men, not in the sense of pushing them out there before their time. But pressure is the standard is, OK, you become a, an adult, you get yourself situated. And then from there, you don't grow comfortable in your singleness. Then you start looking for that wife. Mm-hmm. Right. And then mm-hmm. that's the foundation that God blesses for whatever else is next to come. So I, I think that that's the biggest issue. The value in marriage is being diluted by the church or not being promoted enough in a church uh, from what, I, what I've saw. Yeah. And uh, your second, the second part of your question, I'm going to have to read. Can okay. I read? Go ahead. Okay. Because mm-hmm. uh, this is, this is an important question. And this is so common. You know, when our heroes hear it, or the guys from our church, this is what we talk about in our heroes meeting all the time. Uh, once a month, all the time. We talk about real stuff. Right. And uh, this question is real about the side chick. Um, Coming to you are just an old soul. I mean, all her <laughs> words are just old side chick. Right, Anybody right. say side chick? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so <laughs> why do men feel it's okay to have that? Well, uh, we just go call it cheating. Let's just call it that. Okay. So, so men cheat for, for several reasons. Um, and I'm, I'm going to kind of read some of these reasons that I've dealt with here at, uh, ABC. Uh, some do it because they do not have their wife properly lodged in their life meaning they have a secret life that she's not privy to, Mm -hmm. okay? This happens when a man doesn't trust his wife or women. Trauma from a woman through molestation, Jezebel uh, emasculating, having a Jezebel emasculating mother or a cheating mother Mm -hmm. uh, can cause a man to shut down on his wife and create a frivolous secret life where trust is not necessary. Mm -hmm. So trust is not necessary with the side chick uh, because she's a side chick. Uh, And then some cheat because they are failing as a man or they are being emasculated by the role of their wife. They use their ability to get other women to make make up for the low self-worth that they're feeling because they're whack Mm -hmm. and their their wife is large and in charge. Right. And so they'll they'll do that. Um, Some men just have wandering eyes and a lustful spirit. I mean, they just some men just got the can't help. Got the can't got a severe (laughs) case of the can't help it. (laughs) in them and they need to address this with fasting and prayer according to the bible it's not going to come out any other way you got to fast you got to pray you may can't have internet access you may can't watch uh late night uh hbo you may i mean it's some certain things you may never be able to do because of that you you allow those wandering eyes and lustful spirit to be in you too long okay and then others may have health issues that affect their libido. And I talk about this all the time when men put too much pressure on themselves to try to get out there and get paid and get it and do it. They begin, their body will, will run low on DHE and they'll begin to, the, the body will begin to burn their, uh, will run low on adrenals and their body will begin to burn their sex hormones as adrenaline. 
Right. And this will mess with their libido, make them impotent. And then they think they've got midlife crisis. They're saying midlife crisis is hitting men in their 30s now. Wow. But it's not really midlife crisis. It's just you've put too much pressure on yourself. It's killed your libido and you don't have those desires. That's why they're advertising testosterone shots all the time and advertising all these other things, uh, drugs and stuff to help you get it back. Because if a man on his own, if this starts happening to a man, he thinks the way I got to get it back, I got to put myself back out there on the market. Right. And let me, let me, let me get my Mac out. He go get the hat, the leopard hat. He go get the kicks the and, and I'm, I'm step out. Wow. And do, <laughs> I'm going to do my thing again. <laughs> it ain't too late. Right, right. You know, but that's, <laughs> but that's, that's what it is. It, yeah. it, it, it's not midlife crisis. It's just you burn some, some vital uh, ingredients that your body needs to fuel, make fuel for energy. You, right. you burn even your sex hormones. And so this makes them seek out women to feel that they still have their youthfulness. That's right. what uh, a midlife crisis is. So all of these different reasons uh, men cheat and they all need to be dealt with. If they aren't dealt with, and I believe the church is a place that it needs to be dealt with because it can be dealt with not just from a you shouldn't do that standpoint, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, we want to make you a better man in yeah. Christ so Solutions. that you can live for the Lord and Solutions. actually have a real viable solution. I mean, Amen. every church is, is a church full of people with a past. Right. Okay. That's what church is. Everybody's done something, mm -hmm. but we come to the church, get the information we need, and then we apply it. Okay. And I, and I know you said my referral of a side chick, that's old school, but is that not the appropriate definition? <laughs> She's a side <laughs> Shit. And I know we're talking about males today, <laughs> but can we also talk about this real quick before we take a break? What about those women that are okay with being a side chick? They mm -hmm. fine. They wear it as a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. Uh, it, it goes back to uh, followerlessness, like as we touched on earlier. So the, again, if, if you don't have a father or the young lady doesn't have, grow up in a, in a home with a father that's exemplifying those roles, then she's going to settle for whatever she feels like is filling that void temporarily. I, she doesn't know consistent comfort. She doesn't know consistent protection, consistent provision. She doesn't know it. So that that temporary fix uh, or, or feel of a void for, for that particular style of a woman, she just needs the same thing that the man. She needs the proper um, teaching, right? Proper time for deliverance and healing. And then she needs to apply whatever is being shown to her from an older, more mature woman who can help her identify that. And I think mm -hmm. it's safe to say that that's what's missing in the church today, too. We don't have those older mothers that pick those women out. Why are you eyeing that, that married man? Get on over here and get yourself and sit down. Like We don't have that anymore. We used to even see it in some of the movies. We don't even see it in the movie anymore. Um, so so that, 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 that's what the issue is. The issue is if she, doesn't, if she wasn't raised uh, with values and morals, then she's not going to have it even later on in life. So shame on that man for taking advantage of it. But also, again, Given both sides, they both just need to get somewhere up under some decent leadership, some sound doctrine, you know, be talked to, be taught. And then, you know, it, it can be worked out in Jesus name. And then it can also down. be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it can be some violations that may have occurred in our life at a young Amen. age as well. Yep. You know, rape, molestation, these kind of things are entryways for those spirits. Mm -hmm. And they, they just make a they just devalue a girl. Mm -hmm. So when she experiences you know, those things, especially when it comes from the hands of a family member or something, she already devalues wow. herself. So it's almost like I'm getting used to. Yeah, she's yeah, used to yeah. She's, yeah. She's devalued herself. So what she does is she goes out uh, and then the devil will target her to go out and try to, you know, make it, you know, go to college and get an education so she can get a good job and, you know, try to cover everything up so she can, you know, get on the grind and be successful. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's appealing like, well, uh, a married man, she'll she'll convince herself that marrying a guy wouldn't even work in my situation anyway because I'm out here on the grind anyway or whatever. And, wow. and so, you know, she'll settle for a guy that's already attached to someone, already married to someone because that fits better in the plan she thinks she has for herself. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, at the end of the day, she's smoking weed. She's using some kind of drug or some kind of, you know, uh, something to to mask those true feelings because you know that's one thing about creation roles we you can't kill the creation role not the need for it right that's built in us because god built us that way so it's gonna take some drugs it's gonna take some something to try to hide that or to mask that because that need is gonna cry out to you every night yeah
Well, we've got to take a real quick break, and we're going to be back with more of the exposition talking about the mating male. Keep it here and visit us online at exministries.com. Responsible for most of the issues permeating our churches today. Divorce, unwed mothers, aging singles, homosexuality, and adultery are plaguing the church, which makes its witness ineffective to the world. How can the church preach and teach against sexual sin if the church itself is oppressed by it? Because of the secret nature of these issues, they usually go unresolved. Because many in church leadership struggle in this area, the parishioners are made to feel that there is no hope. This message addresses the cause and effect of secret sins and how to get free from them. Unearthing the root causes of these sins is vital in obtaining deliverance from them. This video is of paramount importance to learn how to get victory over these issues and truly walk in freedom from sin. Once Christ sets you free, you are free indeed. Excessive solitude is one of the major errors many men make when leading their homes. Being alone, no friends, no fellowship, living in your head. In prison, solitary confinement is considered a form of torture. They use isolation as a weapon to punish. You don't have men in your life you don't fellowship with me, if you don't ask for counsel and advice, if you don't have an authority in your life that you can go to before you make big decisions, before you do things, you are gonna error. God wants men to be men. He wants you to be the head of your home, the provider, the protector, and the priest of your family. He wants you to raise your family. You're not making decisions based on you anymore. You definitely can't make decisions based on what folks think. It's all about your what? Children. We can't live for ourselves anymore. The American dream is awake and is crying. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I want to apologize because I said Carmina's comment about side chick was old. And during the break, I was just told that I'm the one that's old because <laughs> side chick is like relevant now. That's what people are saying. So I just want to thank Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. <laughs> We've got to get into more questions and we're talking about the mating male. So here's a very interesting question. What is with this whole men and women best friends thing? What is that all about? You know, we, 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 we touched on that a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, men who have women as their close companions are weak. I mean, that's just really what it is. There's no, there's no way two sides about it. So what, what happens is they are too weak to handle strong men that sharpen them, um, which means ultimately they don't want accountability. That's what it comes down to. So instead of having a man that's going to look at you in the face and say, man, you're wrong, you need to change that. I'm still your boy, but you're wrong. They want a bosom to lay up under so their <laughs> head can be rubbed. Oh, it's going to be okay. You think so? No, yeah, it's going to be okay. And that's really what it comes that's down it. to. Listen, that's, that's what it is. I was raised in a single parent home. I get it. These are things that I've had to work through on my own. When I was a little bit younger, I had the natural ten tendency to want to talk to a female because I didn't know why. Mm -hmm. But once I got the information, I was able to bounce it off the information. I was learning to say, oh, because all I really had growing up was my mom in the house or my older sister in the house. My sister used to refer to me as her son, even though my mom was right there. So I had, I had brothers, but my brothers were out. You understand what I'm saying? So as I grew older, it was certain areas God wanted to sharpen me in. He got me around the proper man to sharpen me in those areas. Um, and so I can, I can speak to that. Being able to have solid brothers around you that can look you in your face and say, hey man, you know, that, 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 that's a little soft brother. And, and not be offended though. Mm -hmm. I, I can take that. I'll be able to, okay, cool. If you, if you viewing that as something soft, let me go ahead, take that back. Let me think about it, how I can reapproach it. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. So, 
So men who prefer women, they're just weak. And they need to get around strong men to be sharp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpens iron. Yep. So does uh, a man sharpen the countenance, countenance. of his friend. Didn't say a woman. It says a man. A woman is not iron. A woman yeah. is the weaker vessel. The Bible says that. So uh, good point you made. Glad you used yourself because that, that, that makes a lot of sense because I remember back when you were on your on the road to Whackville. And when yeah. you got information, you applied it. Yeah. And uh, that's why you're sitting here today, because you, you, you would hear it and you were like, yeah, I, I want to change that. I want to fix that. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what our upbringing was. Right. We still got to make a sound doctrine decisions. Absolutely. Uh, we can't just hear it and, and stay the same. Mm. And then another thing on that point you made <laughs> that I want to say uh, is any woman that has a bunch of close male friends uh, that don't view her as a potential. Mm -hmm. I mean, she should feel terrible. <laughs> she should feel like a side chick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really, or I mean, a thought. Yeah. Yeah. They I, say that's old. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But she should feel like that because, I mean, you hanging with dudes that aren't interested in you at all. Right. And you don't feel mm -hmm. nothing about that. That basically means you're good enough to hang with, right. but you ain't marriage material. Wow. I mean, you ought to be insulted by that. I, that when women say that, yeah, see, I just have male friends. I just, so, oh, then you trash. Mm -hmm. Well, you got a bunch of male friends that, that ain't interested in you. That's right. You, I mean, they ought to be so tempted. You ought to have, well, I can't be around dudes because <laughs> I'm just so bob. <laughs> <laughs> I sound so old today. <laughs> it's okay. Embrace it. Embrace it. So then Embrace you always it. mention, and you both mentioned it just now, talking about how men get around other men to help sharpen them and help grow them to the next level. So <clears> then <throat> in our new generation, it seems like men are assuming that they know it all. Our younger men, they know it all. So they don't get around more seasoned married men and try to get information or try to get that knowledge to make their relationships better. They just like, I got this. Don't tell me nothing. What's, what's, what's the deal with that? I mean, so lack of fathers, it, it, father, fatherlessness mm -hmm. makes it hard for, for young men to subject themselves or submit themselves up under strong leadership. You know, we see it every day. You know, the, the conversation continues and it's been going on for a long time um, that our young men need more strong role models. They need strong role models. They need stronger role models. But when an actual strong man steps into their life, they don't understand how to respond to the That's authority. Right. Exactly. Right. So they rebel and they go worse, right? Um, but you got to understand that when men are raised by strong women, they usually shy away from strong male leaders in the front anyway. You know, um, I think to, to provide more clarity of balance to my personal testimony, I've always had uncles, I've always had male cousins that I was able to be around. So there was a sense of it there. I just didn't have the consistency of it. So it's almost like a Monday through Friday. It's like a whatever. But then a Saturday, Sunday, you get a little bit of dose of it, so mm -hmm. to speak, or whatever. So mm -hmm. uh, thank, thank God for that. Um, mm -hmm. But that's what it is. You know, it, it's just hard for these young men to subject themselves. I keep saying that. Submit themselves um, under strong leadership because they didn't have the fathers coming up in, in their home. Yeah. And then a, a young man has to be very sure of himself to be around a, a man that's sure of himself. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. I, that's my biggest struggle in life because... You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not perfect at all. I don't even walk around like I am, but I'm, I'm pretty strong willed mm -hmm. and I'm very strong in knowing who I am and what God has called me to do. Mm -hmm. Like there's not a doubt in my mind who I am, not a doubt in my mind, not a time that I doubt, it, 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 you know, has God called me to do what I do. I know that. Right. Mm -hmm. so, but to have people around you that are, are weak in the area of purpose in their own life, a lot of times they're intimidated by that. And they just don't know how to handle you. Mm -hmm. And what ends up happening is if a person is around you like that and they don't see it as an opportunity to try to get to where you are, like, let me apply some principles and get there. Right. Then the next step for them is just going to be envy and jealousy. Right. So they're going to be jealous of you. And when a person is envious and jealous of you, they're going to try to compete with you. Mm -hmm. But you can't compete with a person that knows who he is and you don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. That's just going to turn into some crazy slander or some just some hurt feelings or whatever you're going to have. You're mm -hmm. not going to be able to compete with that because at the end of the day, you're still feeling down on yourself because you don't know who you are. And I think that has a lot to do with why men won't subject themselves to sound male leaders because they, they, they want to 
appear to be equal to them or appear to be like them when they're not and they don't see it they don't seize the moment or the opportunity that, i'm the type of person i want to be around what i'm trying where i'm trying to go right like i i want i want men to sharpen me i want men to be better i want to yes, be sir. around the fellowship man you know there are times i just drive up to the church if i know the brothers up here uh building or whatever they do i just come up here and walk around i just want to talk i just want to be around strong men right. um because you, you know i know that just makes me stronger mm -hmm. but when a person is down on themselves or and, and you know and, and Men go through those stages. All men do. When you're down on yourself, you're low on yourself. I mean, that happens here. But what do we do? We get around the brother. Dude, you better get around the brothers. Yeah. You better get around the brothers. Time to go who? You better get around the brothers. And, that, <laughs> and that's like a thing we all say. We're yeah. just like, man, I need to get around the brothers. I need yeah. to get around. My son told me just a couple of weeks ago, he's like, we, we were up here. And he's like, yeah, I need to come up here. I need to be around the brothers. Yeah. That's just, that's how we sharpen each other. That's how we, so, so we don't compete with each other and, and, be envious of each other right. we're just trying to all be strong together so that we can be better men for our families and different things okay so you're gonna call me old and i'll take it but i made up a word because this this is how we got to get this next question out right. stick to it in this that's a word when did men lose that it seems like now what's happening is as soon as something goes wrong in the relationship mm -hmm. or something they disagree with or it's not their way they out they don't try to fix it. They don't try to get understanding. Let's not go talk to nobody. They're out and they're on to the next. Why is that? Uh, you gonna define stick to itness? Stick to itness. They can't hang in there. Okay. They gotta hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's it's like a fortitude. Fortitude is the issue. Um, so so listen. When when a man lacks fortitude, he will absolutely be a quitter. Um, he will quit when he is truly challenged. But he would also make mo emotional decisions instead of logical ones. So he's basically functioning like a woman instead of a man. So I, I have the scene in my head, not the actual scene, but something like it from Black Panther, right? When, when, they was, when they were getting ready to fight, the force field went over Wakanda. So think about this. If you know that you have an imp imp impenetrable force field, you'll walk right up to it face to face, knowing that whatever's on the outside of it, it can't move you. That's the, that's the concept. As That's what a father provides for his son and gives him a, a a sense of fortitude that no matter what, he won't waver in what he's doing. So if I know that I'm a provider, if I know that I'm a priest, if I know that I'm a protector in my home, that's that's providing me my fortitude, my home. So I don't need a stage. I don't need any additional accolades. I mean, even on my job, I, I speak to myself. I keep getting promotions, but it means nothing to me because of what I'm doing at home. So it's that fortitude that I believe um, is lacking. I mean, when it comes to the stick to itness, you would need to be fortified in that. Mm -hmm. You need to know, as Pastor was saying in his testimony, he's sure of himself. Mm -hmm. And that's what a father does. And or if you didn't have the father lack thereof, you would have men that you come around to help you build that up. Mm -hmm. And the creation roles is what builds the stick to itness. Mm -hmm. Because you can, if you grow up seeing it, you're going to want to do it. You're going to mm -hmm. want to imitate it. You're yeah. going gonna to want to mimic it. Because that's what you grew up seeing. Yeah. Uh, if we're training up a child in the way he should go, when he's old, he won't depart from it. That's basically saying that, you know, that if, if we put the right ingredients in there, mix it up right, do it the right way, mm -hmm. then what they see, they're going to want. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so if dysfunction is not there, and let me say this, you know, we're talking about fatherlessness, but this, this doesn't just apply to homes where the father isn't there. A home, a father can be in the home and not, and not the of the home. That's right. right. So yeah. he could be there and just be so emasculated by the mama yeah. until, you know, he's just a body yeah. in the house, you know, yeah. but the woman is <laughs> ruling everything like mm -hmm. Claire Huxtable. Just, <laughs> I mean, the man is just, you know, he's a babbling idiot. Right. And the woman has all the, the, the smarts, which right. is what TV likes to portray anyway. So, you know, we're not just talking about men totally abandoning, abandoning a home, but we're talking about men being in the home sometimes. That's right. And they, I mean, you know, I know men that live in a home and they don't even work. They totally dependent on the wife. Right. Stay home dads and all that old crap, you know. So <laughs> it's just disgusting. Yeah. But the kids don't know. So the creation role is going to give them that stick to it. And it's because, you know, if you got a father that did it, then when the son is ready to quit, he gonna go talk to his father and his dad's gonna say, bro, I was right there. I know how you feel, but man, you can't quit, you know. Question, so I, I, I've seen this, I've seen this conversation play out, right? 
Um, so there's always extremes. And, and one of the things I love about the teaching that goes forth at ABC is, you know, it's a, it's a thing that makes sense that we don't cater to, um, I, the word fails me, we don't cater to the dysfunction. That's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. We don't cater to the dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And that was an eye opener for me because I grew up in a church and I've always seen the message cater, catering to the dysfunction. So the idea that they, there are extremes out there in different marriages or different situations, right? We, we recognize those as a church, but that doesn't mean that we tailor the message if that's not what's actually supposed to be taught. So you will have those situations where a woman will say, okay, so my mama stayed or my granny stayed, or I heard all of these, these stories about they stayed and they were physically abused, mentally abused, mm -hmm. verbally abused. Mm -hmm. So what we supposed to, it's not the olden days no more. That's not what the message is saying, but it also doesn't mean that there still isn't space for healing and reconciliation. Right. So if there's time apart, and I've learned this here at ABC, so if there's time apart that's necessary under counsel, then do that. Mm -hmm. It still paves the road to come back, to, right? Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that what God did for us with Jesus Christ? He gave us a way back to him. You better preach, boy. So I don't understand, or I, not that I don't understand, I think that that was important to expound on because there, there's people who want to leave their homes on these particular bases. And the extremes are the extremes. Mm -hmm. You deal with those case by case. Mm -hmm. But then when you're talking about just making up something to leave your home, mm -hmm. we got to be stronger than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and because here at ABC, we preach the standard Absolutely. regardless. Mm -hmm. So some people, this message, this coming Sunday might hurt their feelings. The next week, it may hurt some other people's feelings. That's right. But the standard's going to be preached. We're not going to preach what people are doing or cater to what they're doing. This ain't the potter's house. So right. we ain't doing what TDJ does. Amen. You know, that, that whole, you should have blew your brains out and you <laughs> should have been dead and you should have this and you should have that. No, I ain't preaching that, That's man. Right. No, Amen. won't you quit doing what you, won't right. you quit going to the gun shop? I right. mean, won't you quit doing what you was doing <laughs> to want to blow your brains out or need your brains blowed out? <laughs> won't you put something in your head that makes that, sense? That makes sense. Won't we use some sound doctrine? Amen. And that's what we teach. Here. We teach sound doctrine and we try to exemplify it. We try to live it and we don't want a bunch of dysfunction. But you got to realize a lot of a lot of these people can't preach it because they themselves are divorced right. or they got divorced kids or they got divorced, you know, very close to them. And so to, to cater to that, they got to cater to all the divorces right. or they got to cater to the people that come to them and, and tell them, should I get a divorce? Because right. the minute they say, no, you should, you need to stay with them. They're going to point mm -hmm. and say, well, you didn't. Hmm. Well, you didn't. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's the issue here. Right. So let me let me let me let me um, um, bring this to a close and, and give this bottom line uh, real quick. But this was some good, good, good information. Very good questions, Carmina. Bottom line, there are many factors that are inhibiting men from being strong. These factors are all planned by the enemy to soften the man so he cannot protect, provide and be the priest of the home. This in turn leaves the home unprotected and subject to spiritual issues that come when a home is uncovered. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem. We aren't looking at this from a spirit through a spiritual lens. Mm -hmm. These are spiritual issues. Yeah. These are the most important and pertinent of issues, spiritual issues that are messing up generations of kids and mm -hmm. families. Right. The saddest part is that the place that should be fortifying the home and making sure it is up to God's standard is the church. And yet the church has become so focused on mimicking pop culture and getting money that many of them have neglected to teach sound doctrine and creation roles. It's time for the church to get back to God's order and teach men and women how to keep sound marriages and keep their vows. But this starts with the leaders themselves and their own commitment to God's creation roles. The Bible tells us Titus 2 and 1, which is sound doctrine. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in the faith, in charity, and in patience, that the aged or the older women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things so that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands and to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own 
husbands, not anybody else's husband. That's right. <laughs> not the pastor. Right. <laughs> Their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of what? Good, Good works. Work. Good works of what? Good, Good decisions. decisions. And doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity.